This video talks a little bit more about the timbre and texture and other changes and their relationship to larger forms. It's a supplement to the main video on some elements of form in American popular music. Textural and timbral changes. The main video argues that these can cue formal positioning in so much as certain textural changes occur at specific points in a song. Let's go through a couple of examples of this. Adding spoken lyrics will indicate that you are probably either at the beginning, so you'll have spoken words at the beginning, or you have spoken lyrics about halfway through the song. So you hear that and you know that you're in one of those two places. An example might be the vocal break in Duran Duran's I Want Your Love. If you hear an instrumental solo, this probably means you're about two thirds of the way through the song. Lots of examples of this, but Sonny and Cher's A Cowboy's Work Is Never Done gives a good example of this. Also, this is basically how Kenny G paid all of his bills in the 90s. Reorganizing or repeating previous lyrics indicates that you're nearing the end of the song. Once you hear an example of this, you'll be like, oh, this happens all the time. Think about the tune every time I think of you. One way to indicate to your listeners that the song is going to be longer than usual is to tell a narrative or have some kind of storytelling aspect to your lyrics. The Humpty Dance by Digital Underground is a great example of this. I also want to say a little bit more and give some examples of the novelty swish. So this was the little spike of novelty at the end of the track. Now, novel textures tend to be associated with each formal zone. And then when the zone returns, that texture usually returns too. So what this chart shows you is that the first time that you hear a module or like the first time that you hear a verse, so the first time that you hear a chorus in a song, you, you're hearing a new texture most of the time. But then when you hear that chorus repeat, well, golly gosh, that texture comes back too. Repeat, 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 golly gosh, which means that as the song progresses, you're going to have more and more repetition, which is why you get this like downward slope in this chart of novel or new events within a piece. But then as I described in the main video, the last 20% of a track often introduces some new kind of sound, some, some texture that you haven't heard before, so that you get this swoosh of novelty right at the end after a decline through most of the piece. Leslie Gore's You Don't Owe Me has a third modulation in the last se several seconds of the tune. Meatloaf's You Took the Words Right Out of My Mouth, you have new vocal backups near the end of the song. And a really interesting case is Rob Bass and DJ Easy Rock's It Takes Two. Because the, the you get this re-looping at the end, which creates the novelty hook. It's a new texture that we haven't heard before. But what it also is, is an imitation, um, or actually just is a, the looping of the sample on the turntables so that the next uh, sample can be brought in. And so what's interesting about this is that it's both the technology of hip hop going on, but it's also incorporating into the novelty swoosh, which is a trend in the, this corpus that it's participating in. Repeat, 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 golly gosh, 